What's happening guys? Welcome back to another episode of Ruse Reviews and today we are chatting about Shrapnel by Kim Anderson. So let's get into it. So here we are, I hope you're all well and enjoying the start to your year, I guess it's what, February now, coming to the end of February, uh, something's just happened called the Blackpool Magic Convention, uh, I've never heard of it, it doesn't exist, um, but during the Blackpool Magic Convention I was getting notifications and pings going off of um, Kim Anderson performing this effect, Shrapnel. Uh, now when I first saw this come out and the trailers start to come out, it piqued my interest straight away. It's the kind of magic that I really enjoy. Uh, I'm a big fan of Kim's work. I enjoyed his uh, Silver Edge project that he brought out with uh, Illusionist, both projects, and indeed the, uh, the gimmicks, the gaffes that came with that project. Uh, being a coin magician myself, and indeed if you are, go and check that out. Uh, and also I've purchased uh, a couple of other things from him over the years, including a little pin that uh, sort of stabbed, it sort of stabbed, it looked really cool. It was a nice little pin effect where you sort of push it down and the tack would go into your thumb and it would look like it was in your thumb and you could pull it out and hand it out for examination. That was really fun as well. But this, this takes an old principle and indeed an old gimmick and reinvents it in a new and exciting way. So what is shrapnel? Shrapnel is a multi-phase routine, or indeed a modular routine, however you like to play it, uh, in which a spectator can see a ring link and unlink on a safety pin that has been examined by them at the start. It can be examined at the start and at the end. The links are super visual. Um, the links can be done with the magician's ring or indeed the spectator's ring, and I'll get to that in a little bit, um, before being able to examine everything at the end as well uh yeah super super visual now this is the kind of magic i like because it's magic that i can just carry in my back pocket now i have to say the actual um presentation of this is super super nice as well this is the box the packaging that it comes in um and what you get inside the box are a few things you get safety pins of course regular everyday safety pins uh, you also get a little tin a little tin that says uh anderson's on it uh, i'm guessing that was specially printed i don't know of any other mints called anderson's but correct me if i'm wrong um and you also get uh, a magnet that's in there as well which i will come into uh and within the tin itself you get a couple of gimmicks now if you are familiar with the linking safety pins effect, or indeed any sort of linking ring effect, um, you may guess what these gimmicks are. The actual work that's gone into crafting the gimmick is based on Kim's own design, his own thoughts on how to make the original gimmick better. So what you're getting here is an updated version of an original linking safety pins gimmick. Now you get three or four regular safety pins and two of these gimmicks, which is really nice, really handy, because of course safety pins are not the most um, resilient of things in the world. They are just sort of thin metal at the end of the day. So um, being able to carry these and protect these and use these in such a way that uh, adds to the longevity of these gimmicks is gonna be really useful and handy. And that brings me to uh, the tin that this comes in. Um, now, usually how Kim performs this, it's already set up. The regular safety pin is set up with a ring on it, ready to be handed out for examination. But there's also a magnet that you get with this, which I wasn't too sure of at the start. When I saw it, I was like, oh, is this gonna sort of affect how the gimmick, does the gimmick need to be reset in any way? And um, no, Kim has literally added it in because it helps um, clean up a few things. Now, this is why I love Kim's work, because he thinks of everything, right? Uh, now, the magnet isn't uh, a necessity to making this trick work. It's just an additional thought, I feel, that Kim's put in that he uses in the real world. So the, the actual magnet is in the tin to keep everything neat and tidy and so that it doesn't rattle around in your pocket. And it also makes for some very interesting ditches and steals for the gimmick. Um, now, personally, I don't know if I would carry these gimmicks around in a tin um, or even how I might do this. Like it, it could be easily carried around in your wallet if you kept your wallet in your breast pocket or something like that, nothing that you could sit on. But the tin itself is really 
cool as well because you can sort of lift open the tin and he sort of pulls it out and he sort of frames this as an old Chinese puzzle or a puzzle that you would get in a um, uh, a Christmas cracker or something like that, okay? One of those ones that you have to twist and all that sort of stuff to get the ring off. And what I love about this is it feels like a fun game. It never feels like a challenge when Kim's performing because, you know, if, if someone gave you a puzzle, you'd feel like that was a challenge to try and solve that puzzle. But when Kim performs it, his relaxed style of performing really makes it seem like just a bit of a fun game. So this is the kind of effect that I reckon could slot into most people's everyday walk around sets and it's definitely going into mine. So just to give you a quick close up of what the tin looks like, it looks like uh, this, let me get that in focus, uh, nice little tin. And inside is the ring and safety pin, good to go. Now this is the regular safety pin and the ring, and this is how Kim sort of starts his performance in general. Now, I forgot to mention this at the start because the ring comes with this project as well. And when I first saw the trailer for this come out, I saw um, the wording made it seem like uh, there was a phase, like all the, all the routine was done with a magician's ring. And then at one point you borrowed the spectator's ring, which made me think that the magician's ring was gimmicked in some way, right? So when the ring came with it, I was like, oh, okay, I'm gonna have to use a gold ring. Now I'm wearing a gold ring today just to demonstrate that you can do this on your, uh, with <laughs> well, with my girlfriend's ring, I'll demonstrate it for you in a second. But um, the ring itself is not gimmicked. You can literally do this routine with a borrowed spectator's ring right from the start of this routine if you want to. I think the way that Kim has structured this routine, it allows you to sort of build on the fact that you're using your own ring and then they wanna see it done with their ring and then so it sort of builds like that. But if you just had the shrapnel gimmick, you could go out into the real world, borrow a ring and do the moves needed to create these miracles. So let me demonstrate this for you now. So a ring and safety pin are shown. They can be examined out however however you like it. Um, I'm trying to get this in focus. It looks, <laughs> looks a little bit weird. Um, but I'll place the ring and the safety pin together. And again, just with a little blow and a wiggle, the safety pin and the ring hook on together. Uh, now this looks and feels very, very magical. This can be um, sort of handed really close up. Look how close up that is to the camera. Um, this looks very, very clean. Um, and you can even come up here, come up and blow and melt the safety pin straight out. Uh, make, melt the safety pin or melt the ring straight out. Uh, you can even do, this is one of my favorite things, he calls this a spiralicious move, which is really cool. So I'm gonna show you what this looks like. This ring can be on a table, in your hand, in the spectator's hand. I'm gonna try and get this on camera. Uh, it goes one, two, three, and the ring just melts. Look at that, on to the safety pin. If I blow, the ring comes straight off as such. Uh, there are multiple, multiple phases to this routine and Kim goes into a lot of detail about how he performs this in the real world and indeed the multiple phases and moves used to make the link and unlink happen. Um, but yeah, it is a beautiful piece of visual magic. Uh, the spiralicious, that's one of my favorite things to do. That happens in the spectator's hands and yeah, you can literally, I tried this on my girlfriend last night. Beautiful, beautiful moment where that links. Um, also, there's an amazing move called Hawkeye, which I'm gonna try and do for you now, right? I'm gonna fail, but I'm gonna try and do for you now, okay? Uh, where are we? Where are we? Okay, here we are, Hawkeye, okay. Didn't work. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. Ready, here we go. Three hours later. Yeah, I mean, I'm not even gonna lie to you. I just dropped that on the floor and that went walkabout for a long, long time. But, here we go. Hawkeye. Here we go, Hawkeye. Yeah! <laughs> and off it comes, just like that. Oh, God. There's a reason why Kim says he only performs that occasionally. Uh, he's very, very open and honest about this because, you know, he's a real world worker and he says that, you know, if he doesn't do something 100% of the time, he'll tell us and he does. So that is something that I would not recommend doing uh, on your first attempt. Whew. 
But just to show you what this looks like with the ring that doesn't come packaged from factory, um, I'm gonna use my girlfriend's rather garish gold ring, one of her many <laughs> gold rings, and it looks like this, Spiralicious. Here we go. And the ring links. Ta-da! So, the instructions themselves, two hours long. That is two hours of a lot, a lot of moves, breakdowns, heck, there's five group performances, real life. I think he's on, in, on the streets of Dublin or something like that, I'm not sure exactly where, but um, yeah, real life performances. And there's just a lot, a lot of footage and instructions that go with this project. Uh, Kim, as always, is in a flat. I think at one point he gets the director or camera guy in and then they switch to a kitchenette area. Um, but yeah, very, very simple, basic, multiple camera angles. So close up, different views, so you can see exactly what's going on. And Kim doesn't just give you the basics of the moves that he's created. He also goes into details on moves like a shuttle pass. If you're into your coin work, you know about a shuttle pass, how to ditch, how to steal, how to retrieve, multiple ways of doing that. I realise that's retrieve and steal could be the same thing i don't know he also teaches you how to do it if you're seated your sort of seated setup um one-handed switching uh loads and loads of stuff there's something on there called frequent flyer frequent flyer frequent flyer check that out um and lots of other stuff about how to store how to repair your gimmick because uh, as i said at the start it is semi-fragile it's very well built but um, you know, you could sit on it wrongly or, you know, store it wrongly and something could happen to it. But it teaches you how to repair it and tweak it if such things do occur. And that's it. There's really not that much more for me to say about this. This is a great, great project. Everyday carry. It's an EDC. All you people going crazy out there for EDCs, this is my new EDC that's going to go either in my wallet or stay in this... Uh, tin here there are people saying keep it in the tin keep it in the tin otherwise you'll sit on it but it will either stay in the tin or in my wallet i'll probably use it more if it's in my wallet but um yeah i i love the fact that you can do this with a borrowed ring i love the fact that you can do this with seemingly normal everyday objects um and i love that every link and unlink is beautiful which is what magic is about it's about beautiful things happening and this is a beautiful beautiful effect so well done kim anderson wonderful project thanks for watching guys been a pleasure as always and i'll see you all very very soon in the next ruse reviews ciao